Hello everyone. My name is Ambar and I'm the engineering director for observability platforms at eBay. What I'm here to present eBay's network monitoring platform called NetVision. So what I thought we'd do today is I'll walk you through a quick background about why we needed this platform. I'll talk about that we uh, that we achieve with this new platform. Uh, we'll talk about the platform itself, about uh, the architecture on which it's built, and then I'll show you a quick demo of what we've built. Um, so for those who are not familiar, eBay is one of the largest online marketplaces in the world. Uh, we have a global footprint with a presence in multiple countries. As you can imagine, the scale at which we operate introduces some very infrastructure uh, challenges for us. Uh, one of the biggest challenges is to make sure that our site is always available uh, for the customers who rely on it uh, throughout the world. So to assist with site availability, we, we uh, have a centralized operations team called the Site Engineering Center. Uh, the charter of this team is to monitor the health of the eBay site and uh, if they detect any issues or any problems, they quickly uh, remediate it using rules and, and that tools that are available to them. As you can see from the picture below, they have this, uh, they sit in this room uh, with uh, screens and monitors that are on the, that are available to them on the wall and all of these screens and monitors, they display uh, essential critical uh, uh, telemetry data in terms of metrics or alerts when they pop up. Uh, the This centralized operations team uses a monitoring platform uh, that is built to detect, uh, to ingest telemetry data from our entire infrastructure all the way from the data centers to uh, the networks, to the uh, to the infrastructure in terms of the computes that are deployed on it, to the cloud, to the applications that, you know, that are built on top of that cloud, right? So we get telemetry data of our entire stack. And this monitoring platform uh, is able to detect anomalies uh, based on either you know, historical data or the rules that are configured within that platform. And then it generates the RCP for this operations team. Uh, once the operation team gets these signals uh, where, uh, where we don't have auto remediation, this ops team can come in and quickly uh, look at these signals, determine if uh, root cause and uh, of why these alerts are happening and then quickly, they are able to quickly remediate them. Now, as you can imagine, it is critical that this operations team is able to quickly pinpoint the problem when an alert shows up for them. Uh, so the picture on the right you see is a sample alert dashboard that, that is available to this operations team. In this, in this case, you will see you know, load balancer connection stacking alerts uh, that, are show, that are showing up for this team. Uh, now, connection stacking is kind of a, a catch-all bucket of alerts for us. Right, in terms of uh, if for whatever reason uh, the app is misbehaving, the load the connections and the load balancer side will start uh, will start stacking. Right, so there may be variety of reasons why uh, why an application might be uh, might be stacking connections on the load balancer. Things like you know there's high GC or you know, there is a high there are CPU spikes or there is high latency on the database queries. So there may be a variety of reasons why the load balance, why the connections might be uh, stacking on the load balancer. Now we have other signals available to this, uh, which can help them start print problems. But one critical thing that was missing was for them to figure out if there is a net problem that, that's happening, right? So they they did not have signal that would indicate if there is an if there is a network problem going on, and if there is where in the network the uh, the problem exists, right? What what top of rack switch, what bubble, what pod is is impaired, and what applications that are deployed on the on that particular part of our network, uh, which applications are being uh, are being made, right? So the goal was to make sure that we are able to kind of answer these questions uh, for that operations team. So with that in mind, we built this new product called NetVision. Uh, it's built on the concept of end-to-end -end probing uh, to enable packet losses in the eBay network. Uh, so for uh, just for reference, uh, Facebook uh, 
Facebook released a paper called NetNorad a few years ago, and NetVision is kind of built on um, using the concepts that were that were published in that in that paper. Uh, so the idea behind it is uh, that it is able to detect continuous packet loss uh, uh, by generating UDP traffic across our network. You know, once it detects packet losses, it's able to utilize its uh, the algorithms that we built in it for uh, for figuring out whether this packet loss can be classified as an alert. And if yes, then it is also able to further classify it based on severity in terms of uh, warning, minor, major, and critical. Uh, NetVision also has these concept or uh, the concept of these agents that are deployed across our uh, across our networks uh, network infrastructure to be able to send uh, these UDP packets out, and we have aut automated agent health monitoring and coverage as well uh, to ensure that we are covering our entire network. Uh, we have the presence of this uh, of this NetVision uh, in two locations in we are eBay is deployed in three three data centers, uh, but then we have an active active uh, uh, architecture with the ability to auto failover. We also have the ability to suppress and silence alerts within uh, within NetVision. This is particularly useful when there is say uh, planned maintenance happening in the network and we know that we are going to get alerts, but we don't want to spam the operations team. So we are able to quickly go in and silence these uh, silence these alerts. Uh, so let's let's deep dive a little bit into into the architecture, right? Uh, so what you see in the in terms of the dotted lines, what you see below the dotted line, this is actually the entire NetVision, and then what you see on the top is our eBay network, right? So NetVision has this um, uh, agent and master kind of uh, uh, architecture. Uh, so the agents are deployed within the servers itself and then the master we we call it shogun uh, that's kind of the heart of the system uh, so let's talk about the the uh, the netvision system first and then we'll talk about how this thing entire entire thing works um so if you go from uh, kind of left to right uh, we have this system called cms uh, which is which stands for configuration management system uh, it has the entire ebay topology in terms of um, you know the data center the networks uh, with, especially for the networks you know what devices are are deployed what are the links that exist between these devices so so this cache this cms uh, in uh, system has the entire topology uh, <clears throat> already built out uh, within it uh, that vision data store is a uh, is a configuration store uh, that we use to uh, for configuring these uh, these agents um, so we have a, a cache built out to basically make sure that we are able to uh, quickly query this data out. Uh, this cache is refreshed uh, four times a day. Uh, on, on top of this cache now we have uh, the agent state manager. This is responsible for maintaining the, the state of these agents uh, to make sure that these agents are always up running. If there is any problem, then um, these agents, uh, this agent state manager is able to uh, remediate the problems within the agent itself. Uh, health checker, this uh, this company maintain the health or to check the health of these agents. And if there is a there is a problem, then it kind of talks to the agent uh, state manager and make sure that those uh, those things are remediated if there's an issue that's found. Uh, Lightning is a company to to publish health signals or to probe these agents to figure out if they're healthy or not. Uh, and it's also it's also used to publish out config uh, config data to this to each of each of these agents. Um, event collector is a component within the within the system that collects data that's coming back color or collects events that's coming those are coming back from the agents uh, and then it passes those on this algorithms that are that are kind of running uh, that are kind of crunching the data and determining if uh, the packet losses constitute an alert and then the severity of those alerts uh, which are then passed those up once it detects the alerts those are then passed through the suppression handler uh, and then to the publisher from where they are published to our centralized kind of monitoring platform from where the operations team 
uh, operational team consumes those uh, those alerts. And on, on top of the dotted line, you see this is a this is a regular kind of net uh, network. Um, we have servers uh, within racks, and then on top of the racks, we have this this layer of top of rack switches. On top of that, we have the bubbles on po then pods, and then we have the backbone networks. Uh, so, like I was saying earlier, eBay is deployed in three regions, and then those regions are kind of connected through this uh, this backbone network. So, like an example of how how this thing works, right? So, like I was saying earlier, we have this uh, we have this NetVision data store that that has the configuration of what each agent needs to do, and then we also have this network CMS cache which map which has a mapping of all these links and how these devices are connected to you know, connected to each other. So the, uh, the agent state manager uh, crunches the uh, data that's coming from this NetVision data store and builds out configs for each one of these agents. And then the light, uh, Lightning system pushes, that, pushes those, uh, you know, those configs out to these agents. So these agents are now configured to start sending. Uh, so now they, these uh, agents have configuration in them to say, okay, as, as a sender, N1 will have uh, destinations configured to it to say okay you need to you need to send UDP probes to multiple of these destinations and once it receives that configuration it starts sending these uh, these UDP probes every uh, every minute now that's configurable we can we can reduce it to say every 30 seconds or so but uh, let's just assume for now it's every every minute uh, so when this agent starts up uh, and it takes that configuration on uh, for example, let's just take an example where this agent, the N N1 agent, is supposed to, uh, based on this configuration, is supposed to send UDP probes to N5, which is located uh, right here, right? So what it what it uh, does is it starts sending the UDP probes out. Now let's take an example where the UDP probe takes the path of it goes to Tor1, right? Then it goes to Bubble1, then it goes to Pod1, then it goes to the Phoenix backbone uh, of then it jumps over to the uh, to the other uh, data center through the backbone. Then it goes to pod two, bubble three, top of rack switch three, and then it reaches the server five, which is the intended destination. Once this agent receives that UDP packet, it sends uh, a message back or an event back uh, to the NetVision system saying, I received the packet. I was supposed to receive this packet and I, uh, I received it. Now let's take another example where N1 has a configuration where it needs to send an uh, uh, a UDP packet to N7, which is again right here. So it still takes the same path where it goes to Tor1, Bubble1, Pod1. It goes to the backbone, jumps over to the other um, uh, other data center, goes to Pod2, then goes to Bubble4, Tor7, which is top of rack switch 7, and then down into uh, into the rack uh, uh, into the server 7. Now it's supposed to take this path, but for whatever reason, for example, it, it doesn't reach here, right? So server seven for that one minute cycle did not report an event saying I, I received this packet that I was supposed to receive from server one or uh, from N1, right? So I did not get this packet, for example. Now at the same time, in the same cycle, for example, N3, who's right here, is configured to send uh, an event to N7. So again, it starts the UDP uh, uh, publishing, a uh, packet publishing. It goes from uh, from N3 to uh, to Tor3. It goes to Bubble2. It goes to Pod1. Then it goes to Phoenix SLC. Uh, then jumps. Then it's supposed to jump over to Pod2. Uh, then to Bubble3. Then to Tor3, and then it's supposed to reach here, right? So that's the that's the path that's expected. Uh, but for that one minute cycle, again, if if server five or if N5 did not report an event saying I received this uh, received this UDP packet, it means that packet packet was lost somewhere in the network. Uh, now the idea is that since there are and this 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 is just three examples, right? But as you can imagine, we have we have thousands of these uh, these agents deployed are deployed on our network, um, and these every for every published cycle they gen they uh, generate millions and millions of events so even though this is a very small sample set as you can imagine if there are enough of these going 
uh, we will we we know we know what what is the expected path between n7 and uh, for in this example between n1 and n7 right so n1 and n7 can can take a defined path uh, and we know what that path is based on this uh, cms data so when the when these packets start get start uh, uh, being lost we can quickly figure out what is the common layer at which these packets are getting lost right these confidence algorithms do uh, they look at what the data should be in terms of what is what that what technology should be and then they look at which packets are getting lost and then they start looking at what is the common common uh, layer at which these are getting lost right so for example in this case uh, if you if you see if if there are many many uh, you know, packets that are getting lost uh, in in kind of in this way or in this way you see that the common layer in which these packets are supposed the common layer that with, in which these packets are supposed to go is this pod 2 right so that's the that's the common one so most likely there is something wrong here where the pack where the pack, uh, packets are uh, are starting to get, are starting to uh, drop right and like i was saying there are there are many many packets that are uh, close to millions of packets that um, uh, that we publish out every 60 seconds and then um, we get those millions and millions of events uh, into the centralized system and then that's how we are able to kind of crunch the data within these algorithms and figure out what these com commonalities are um, so for the most part uh, we are we are very confident about what we uh, about detecting the the layer at which these packets uh, get lost now again like i was saying we are able to uh, we are able to uh, define severity of these alerts uh, based on how many of these packets one how many packets get lost and two how many how many of these agents are reporting packet losses right so for example if only one agent is reporting uh, consistent packet loss it may not be a big uh, it may not be a major issue but if many agents start reporting packet losses commonly across a layer or across a device then we definitely have a have a problem and we start uh, we start publishing out alerts to the uh, to the operations team um, now like i was saying earlier we also have this uh, health system uh, where we we send out these health probes to the system uh, to make sure that the system the uh, the agents are up and for whatever reason if these uh, health probes come back and uh, as uh, indicating that the agent is unreachable uh, this agent state manager goes in and either replaces the agent or makes sure that uh, they can restart the agent um, we've we've done over over trial and over multiple trial and error uh, we've figured out that to maintain coverage across e entire ebay network uh, we need about two agents per rack right so that's kind of the coverage that we've um, that's kind of the sweet spot that we found uh, in terms of uh, main, making sure that we have coverage across the across our inter, infrastructure uh, network infrastructure and that we get enough signals to be able to detect these uh, these packet losses um, so that's that's kind of how the architecture works uh, this is uh, the way we we display the alerts to the operations room right so this is on the like i was telling you earlier we have this site engineering center uh, wall and this is one of the dashboards that um, the alerting dashboard that uh, kind of shows up on the wall uh, on the left you'll see uh, we have some point of presence locations uh, and then data centers on which uh, uh, that are that are shown on the left panel um, the red orange blue sorry yellow and blue indicate the severity of the alerts that we are seeing in each one of these uh, on the right you'll see which exact device is alerting uh, and then you'll see you know bit what's the ratio of the packet losses across these uh, across these data centers it will also tell you which type of device it is right so it's, is it a bubble is it a access switch or a top of rack switch and then the colors indicate the severity of the of the alert uh, the visualization and i'll show you i'll show you a demo of this as well uh, the concentric circles kind of from from out, outside to inside uh, the outside concentric circle indicates uh, the top of rack switches uh, there are so many of those uh, one the, the inner one indicates the bubbles uh, then the pods and then uh, the innermost circle indicates the uh, the backbone uh, of the network right 
Uh, so, uh, so when you see light green dots, all of those are, are indicate uh, top of rack switches. And then you'll see less and less of those as you come inside, because obviously you have the, the number of devices on the, in the bubble layer are less and then the ones in the pod are even less and then the backbone is obviously uh, much less. Uh, so that's this is one kind of detection dashboard that we have, and then we also have this triage dashboard. Which uh, once the uh, once the operations engineer sees an alert, they are able to quickly come to this other dashboard and then drill down into it, right? And then then they can figure out okay, which what's the actual device, what's the severity, you know, look get some more details about how many senders are. Are reporting the problem? How many um, how many how many senders actually sent the probe? Um, how many uh, receivers were supposed to receive the probe? But uh, and then we have some uh, uh, probe loss, standard deviation, and uh, and percentages that we uh, that we display. So when so when you expand this, you can see more details of each one of these uh, alerts. And then we also have severity and then distribution about uh, what how many alerts are uh, are being generated. Uh, so I'll show you a quick demo of how this thing actually works on the wall, right? So let me refresh the screen. Uh, so the, again, this is a demo. This is not a live product. Uh, but as you, as I was telling you earlier, uh, this is how the the dashboard kind of looks like on the wall. Um, tars, pods, or uh, tars, bubbles, pods, uh, and then backbone, right? So imagine you know we detected a data loss, and this is how the kind of the uh, thing lights up, right, on the on the SEC wall. So you'll see that okay, we see we are seeing two alerts uh, at this uh, at this uh, bubble level. Uh, so we we said okay, two two uh, tors are reporting under this bubble, and then one tor is reporting under this bubble, right? So we are seeing packet losses against uh, these uh, these tors. So at this point, the the we now start seeing more uh, packets uh, packet losses reported across different tors now right so so we are seeing more and more alerts with each refresh cycle or with each cycle of those probes we are seeing more now suddenly we see one more show up right so the the counter here is increasing uh, we are seeing more and more and then we are now increasing the severity of these alerts to because we are start now potentially starting to see a problem in this uh, in this region right because uh, we now have three of them reporting here then when we start when we start seeing a fourth one here, then we start elevating those errors to the next level, right? So initially they were reporting at the uh, at the top of rack switch uh, level. Then we once we start de uh, detecting more and more packet losses, we elevate um, that to the bubble level, right? So now the now the alert is at the bubble level. Whereas in the other cases, if you see here, since there was only one alert, uh, the alert was still level. Here as well. There are two of them. Uh, we uh, the alert is is level, but it's not uh, it's not a critical alert. Now here we are seeing more and more of these packet losses, which means that there is something going on at the bubble level, and so the alert kind of uh, we raise the severity of the alert, and we also make it uh, we also bring it uh, into focus for for the operations team to say, okay, here you need to start focusing on this. There's something going on here. Uh, the count uh, go up, and then uh, you'll start seeing more and more, uh, more and more of these show up in the in the critical uh, uh, in the critical bucket. Uh, so that's kind of how how this whole thing uh, whole thing works. Uh, thank you for your uh, time, and I'm happy to take questions. Thank you.
All right, I do believe we have the phone bridge ready to go. So Amber, you are ready to answer questions. Sounds good. All right, Amber, are you able to see in the panel the Q&A with speakers? Yes, I am. I'm answering questions there. Oh, you are? Okay, great. Sorry, I was muted. Amber, there's one that slipped in through the chat as well, which is the other part of the Q&A. I just put it in our internal chat. Oh, okay, I'll take a look. Uh, it says if there are multiple equal cost parts. Yes, uh, so I just answered this. Uh, uh, I just answered this on the chat. Uh, so late, there were a couple of questions around latency. Uh, so this was a this is an announcement that we recently added where we are able to to now detect latency degradation as well. Uh, well, this is still being tested. So we have, we've not kind of, we've not deployed this in production. Uh, the production deployment only uh, contain uh, or only detects for packet losses right now. Uh, another question was the average UDP packet sending rate. So we send uh, in production right now, we send uh, UDP packets every 30 seconds across all of these configured paths um, across our network infrastructure. Uh, so a follow-up question, another question was, you mentioned that the agents test connectivity to other agents Oh, so it's the same one. Oh, the agents talking to the central master, do the master and agent communications use the same path as the UDP pro packets? If so, does it disrupt monitoring? Yes, that's a, that's a, that's a great question. Um, so yes, it does have the, you know, we do use the same path and there is a possibility that it can disrupt monitoring. Uh, that's why I was saying earlier that we deploy enough of these agents to make sure that we have, in, we have uh, uh, the coverage across our, infra, our, uh, our infrastructure. And we do have two per rack, like I was saying earlier, right? So that is to ensure redundancy. So unless there is a total network uh, failure, uh, then we we should be able to uh, we should be able to uh, uh, we should be able to have enough coverage. Uh, I was wondering what the platform the NetVision is running on. Uh, so the agents are deployed uh, are built in Python. Uh, the backend is uh, built on the this built on an Elk stack right now, uh, Elasticsearch uh, Kibana stack right now, uh, but we are moving that over to a different backend uh, called ClickHouse, uh, just because we uh, the scale is too much for Elastic to ha Elasticsearch to handle at this point. And the visualization that you saw uh, is built uh, is is a custom built visualization using a WebGL. And Amber, I'm sorry, but we are at time. I did post the message for everybody in the uh, attendee chat with the uh, Slack channel. If you want to continue asking questions, Amber uh, can answer them through the Slack channel. Absolutely. I'll have to, I'm right. happy to answer any questions there. Thank you. OK. 
Okay. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the phone bridge then. All right. Thank you. Thank you.